Greetings Retro Gamers. I'm Richard Evans, aka Retro Rich, Richard31337 on Twitter, and this is my second video for the YouTube. So this evening, I'd like to go through checking and cleaning a Neo Geo MVS cartridge, which is this. This game here is Androgenos, which has been uh, sent to me by another collector called Daz. Um, he's asked me to clean this up and check that it works. So I genuinely haven't opened this cartridge yet. Um, I've not even even played the game. I don't put any unclean cartridges in my MVSs, so um, you know it, I don't even know if it works at this stage. So as you can see, the label's not very good, but we will still do our best to ensure that that doesn't get damaged any further than it is. So what's the first thing to do? There's four screws. Let's open it up and have a look. So there are two boards inside MBS cartridges. One has the game and one does the sound. But they're all dirty when you get them. So what we do is fold this up carefully and we'll lift this whole section out and close the cartridge again so we don't damage the label. Uh, it's looking like it's coming off a bit. It's obviously had a hard life. Okay, so what we're looking at is these two boards here. So we'll take this bit off and these are the boards. Now, at first glance, they're looking original to me. Um, they look like original proms there. Um, it's good to see. There's no indication, but I mean, it's looking very clean as well, to be honest with you. Um, so how do we check this? Well we check this on a website called MVS Scans, which I have here. So this is it, it's www.mvs-scans.com and in here there are many, many pictures of Neo Geo carts for the MVS. So if we look at Andrew Junos here, that's the picture of the label which obviously looks much better there. And you can actually use this to print it out and replace the label if you want. So there are two boards, there's only one set for this. Um, and you know, at first glance it is looking good. So let's have a look at the board, front board here. So the things to note here are the, the number on the chips here, which is 049V1, 049P2, 049P1, that's looking good. The board number, Neo MVS Prog 16, and it does say SNK on there. This is all looking original to me. Um, the soldering looks good if we look at the other side. Doesn't look like it's been reflowed. There's no flux. There's a little bit of a mark there. I don't know what that is, but maybe something got spilled on the cart. Um, but overall, the solder looks like it's been done, flowed in a factory. Um, let's look at the reverse of the board there. Looks pretty much the same to me. Um, let's have a look at the other board here. So, SNK Neo MVS CHA 42G1, made in Japan, um, and the chip numbers are 041M1, 049s. I say, yeah, 049C2, 049C1, 049S1, and that's a Neo 273. That all looks very good. All the mask on the, the board looks correct. There's a chip missing there, which is quite normal. Let's look at the back. Many of these boards are used in different cartridges, so you might find that this particular variant of the board, the CHA 42G-1 is used in many cartridges and that's how bootlegs are created. So what they'll do is they'll take a cheap cartridge like, um, I don't know, Puzzle Bobble, and they'll use the boards from that. They'll program 
um, and you know you'll have windowed EEPROMs, erasable programmable ROMs, uh, and those will have the chip be programmed with the game and the sounds for a much more expensive game, say for example Viewpoint, uh, and then you get your cheap cartridge, blow your PROMs, reconfigure the cartridge, and sell it, and that's a bootleg, or one type of bootleg. So that's looking good at the back. Good, the soldering looks good here. Yeah, it's all looking very original to me, which is excellent. I'm sure Daz will be very pleased. I'm sure he knows it's original too, but like I said, I haven't opened it until tonight. So, finish with that now. All right, so, there are gonna be many people telling you different things about how to clean these. Um, I have got an electronics background. <laughs> you will notice I'm not wearing a wrist strap. Don't, don't give me hassle for that. Um, but, there are, you know, people say use isopropyl alcohol to clean the boards, clean the, the contacts. Really, the most important thing here, since the boards look very clean anyway, is to clean the contacts. And I'm not going to use isopropyl alcohol. That can cause problems. You can end up with residue on there and lots of other problems. So what I'm going to use is a pencil eraser. And here, I'm basically going to rub across all of the contacts. Probably going to get loads of flaming comments about this. This works for me, this is what I do. It's quite a common trick if you've got a SIM card in your mobile phone and uh, you've got problems with the contacts on there. It's always a good thing, give it a rub, takes off the surface oxidization or any rubbish that's on there, finger, you know, uh, oil from your fingers. They look pretty clean to be honest with you, but there's nothing wrong with taking off the top layer of anything that might be on there. What we do want to do, I'm just going to use a rag here, just want to make sure there's no pencil, rubber bits on there. Okay, so that's one side, let's do the other. Pressing quite hard here, it's not going to damage it. The main thing is, it's getting off any rubbish that's on there. What you don't want to do is touch it after you've cleaned it, because you're just going to introduce grease and oils from your fingers or any other rubbish you've got on there. It's looking pretty clean. While I'm not wearing a wrist strap, I am touching, trying not to touch the chips. Um, it's probably best not to damage them. Uh, there's lots of thoughts about this. Some people say it doesn't make any difference at all. I believe that it may reduce the life of, of the chips, um, but you know, I've not actually seen anything blown personally. Okay, so before we put this back together again, why don't we give this a clean? Now the best thing to clean this with is, I mean, you could wash it and let it dry out. I'm a big fan of using baby wipes. So you want ones that don't leave a residue. You don't want any, any with any kind of moisturizing cream or anything in them. Just give it a really nice clean. You only need to do this once, so you know, then you know your cart's clean, and when you sell it, if you're gonna sell it, you know that it's in good condition. But you know, these things are not looked after that well. Once you have cleaned it, get rid of any liquid on there, and then just let it dry. You will be surprised by the time I've finished how dirty this baby wipe's gonna get. Okay, so I'm just gonna give the outside of the cart a nice clean. Now, depending on the quality of the label, you might want to give that a clean. Um, this one's not really going to benefit much from it, to be honest with you. But 
I've seen some of them really start to shine after because they're all dirty. These things have been in arcades, they've been left left in dusty rooms, They've even in the machines there's dust, arcades, everyone used to smoke in arcades, there was God knows what sort of things that would destroy electronics. So, um, you know, these cartridges are pretty filthy generally. It's already starting to look a little bit dirty here. Um, right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the inside. Gonna have to be a bit careful with the label. It's not necessary, it's not, you know, it's just one of those things. While I'm there, I may as well give it a once over. Do you know, this cartridge isn't looking that dirty. I've seen a lot worse. So maybe Daz, or one of the previous owners, cleaned it up. Maybe they've already had a go at it. I've seen a lot worse. Just wanna give all this flat surfaces a bit of a clean. Right, so turn this over. And normally, you know, just be really careful with the, the label. That label's really not gonna take very much. It's pretty much had it. I'd be looking to replace that label if it were mine. Maybe I'll get hold of one and print it out for Daz. So he might like the original label. I'll ask him first, I think. Some people like them to be original, even if, even if they are knackered. So. Right. Now, one of the things, it's not looking too dirty, but let's look at this rag so far. How are we doing? It's looking a bit dirty there. Right, I'm gonna give this a quick going over in here. This is normally where you get a lot of the dirt in there. Like I said, these things are stored in dirty areas. They're not kept in boxes, they're just left on shelves. And some people don't look after them when they've got them anyway. You know, I keep mine in Neo Mini boxes. I like to keep dust off them. Dust is a killer of electronics. So, really starting to look pretty dirty now. Let's do the other side. You know, I've done this to all of the cartridges I own. I must own, I don't know, 30, 40 maybe of these and every single one I've cleaned and every single one has worked. Um, I haven't, I've had a funny, a few funnies with uh, I'll go on to that when I talk about the actual Neo Geo at some point. You do have oddness, <laughs> eccentricities with old hardware. Some cartridges don't like playing in certain slots. Some don't like playing if they've got, you know, it's a six slot machine. If you've got a certain game in slot one, you can't put another game in slot two if it's a, another particular game. Uh, so if you swap them around, you'll find it works. As, you know, I've had some really odd problems with my games at different times, but once you move them around and work out which ones interfere with the others, then, you know, generally things work fine. It's just a characteristic of old hardware. One of those things that, you know, keeps it interesting. Okay, so that's nice and clean. That rag is nice and dirty, which is better on the rag than it is in my machine. I did get a copy of a Metal Slug 3 that the cartridge looked brand new. <laughs> I don't know where it had been stored, if it had ever been played. But anyway, right, so now the next bit. Now there is a certain way to put this back together again. And I need to make sure I get it right. So yes, you can see from the front here, that, that side is thicker than that, which means that it goes this way up. And the easiest way to do this is you can only put the boards in, but you, it is possible to put them in wrong, but if you're doing it the you know, if you're doing it board face up, you should find that it's quite straightforward. So let's put you can see that there's a key in the cartridge here 
that only allows you to put this board here. And likewise, this board will have to go on top because of the key that fits into the top of the cartridge. So what we're gonna do is I find, rather than touching the cartridge contacts, is I hold, hold it like this. Put it in the back, line it up on these two lugs, and then you can just slot this into its little locators outside. There we go. And then you just get this one, slot that in here, and again, locate it on the lugs. Now the cartridge should close nicely, like that. See that label's really knackered. Okay, and then we just put the screws back in. I always back screws off a little bit because uh, you can feel them click just as they locate into the thread. It avoids you cross-threading. It's just something I learned over the years. Yeah, see that little click there, that means it's ready to go in. They don't need to be really tight. I'm not gonna use an electric screwdriver. I'm not a fan of those. I think you can knacker the screws quite, or screw threads quite easily. There you are, it's a little pop. And that is how you check and clean the Neo Geo MVS cart. I will test this and I'll, I'll put a comment on saying I'm sure it works. I haven't tested it yet, but I need to go and set up the machine. Um, but anyway, please comment on the video. Let me know if you like it. Uh, if you don't like it, I'm sure people won't. Some people won't. Uh, and please, you know, subscribe and share. Thanks very much. Ta-ta.